All right, so I'm going to show you how to take this photo and turn it into this in Photoshop right after the intro. From now on, like your parents were. Exciting news, YouTube. My name is Mo, and this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Now it's 2020. And if you're curious like me and you want to learn a lot of things such as photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, Python, web development, analytics and marketing, then Skillshare is right for you. Now we all know how busy one can get. We tend to get very, very busy and forget about our goals. Now Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth with short classes that fit your busy routine and that's amazing. Now take me as an example. I was always fond of Brandon Wolfel's photography style on Instagram and I wanted to learn more about his workflow. So I enrolled into his class on Skillshare where he showed how he prepped for the shoot, the gear and the props he uses and the post-processing workflow he applies in his work. And I was able to funnel what I've learned into my workflow. Now Skillshare is also incredibly affordable the annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Now here's the exciting news. The first 500 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get two free months of premium membership. This way you can explore and enjoy your creativity. So don't miss out. Go ahead, click the link in the description below. All right, so now that we're back to our tutorial, let me walk you through what I've done so far. Now before we start, if you look at the photo and you analyze it properly, you would notice that it looks a little bit hazy in the background, a bit overexposed and we're gonna fix that in a bit. But I want you to keep that information for now. We'll get back to it in a bit. Now what is the first thing that Mo would do? Clean up. I always tend to clean up. It is so clean but what are you cleaning Mo? Now if you zoom in just a bit, you can see these were uh, bothering me. I know it's a part of the track and it's okay to keep it there. It just shows that the car is on the track. I mean, I left maybe a few marks here and there, but these were bothering me because it feels like as if someone spit on the windshield. So I added a new layer and I just cleaned that up. And I've also removed the one of the poles. Now I didn't want to remove all the poles or the light poles from the photo, otherwise it wouldn't look like a track. But this looked like as if it was growing from the car. So. I got that removed. Now I added a selective color and you know with with yellow I just wanted to show more of that color. I just bumped it up so if I look at the yellow at the selective color you'd see that I've uh, moved the yellow slider all the way to the right with the other settings. It's just to give that more yellowish feel to the car. Now next and this is something that I used to do a lot before. Maybe I am not using it as much right now, but I think it's very important is the dodge and burn. Let's have a look at the before and after. And maybe let me just enable that layer on its own so you see what I'm talking about. There you go. So this is a gray layer. I use it for dodging and burning. You can see where I have dodged, made things brighter, and where I've burned and made things darker. Now you might notice that I've added a mask for the shadow because let's look at this back again. If I enable this, you'll see that there is a shadow that I wanted to emphasize. But with shadow is very tricky. You wouldn't want to apply that effect to the entire spectrum of the shadow because shadow starts harsh and fades out. And that's why I added a mask to fade out the shadow. If I disable the mask, this is how it used to look before applying the mask and this is how it looks after and you can see that I've faded out the shadow to make it look real. Now if you're not sure or if you have any question, don't forget to leave me a comment in the comment section below. I'll get back to you on this. And now comes in my magical part which is the camera roll. Now remember when we started I told you pay attention to the photo because it looks overexposed in some areas, especially at the back. And it looked a bit hazy. There's a lot of haze in it. And so that explains the majority of what I've done here. So I brought down the highlights. I increased the shadows. I pumped up the whites. Look at the clarity slider. I never got my clarity slider to that extent. 
But this photo really took it well. And that's because it was hazy, it was overexposed, it was able to add a lot of contrast into this. And you can tell that I've added a bit of dehaze and just a little bit of texture. Now, beside the usual global adjustments, you all know that I add a bit of sharpening and I do the graduated filter. So I add one on the top and I usually bring the exposure down, the highlights down, and just try and uh, get more details or though I don't find a lot of details here, but I don't know, anyway. And the one at the bottom, I do the same. I drop the exposure, I desaturate and try and bring the details of the road itself. Now, great. Let's have a look at the brush here. And this adds a lot of detail to the car. Let's have a look at it. So if I click on this adjustment and um, you would see on the right panel that I added a lot of texture, a lot of clarity, and maybe I've pumped up, yep, I did pump up the white. Let's have a look at the, um, maybe just, let's just, just remove this. And this is the before. Let's have a look at it right now. And you can see it just brought a lot of details in the grill. And this is one of the tricks that I usually use when I find like a very nice looking details of the car, like. The grill, for example. And if you look at this photo of the Porsche, I did exactly the same thing. Although I didn't have an access to texture back then, it was purely the clarity white, and maybe I added a bit of um, exposure to it. And it just brings out the details. So that's a new trick that you've learned today. All right, so let's go back to Photoshop. And you know I can't end that without a beautiful flare. So if I enable this layer, Oh, there you go. There you go. And in this one, I've maybe used a different technique than the usual one. You know, I always experiment with one or another, and that sometimes I do also mix different techniques. And I explained this before. Uh, it's two layers. So let me just enable this on its own. So, oh no. Let me just remove this. So it's um, just a, a very soft brush, stroke twice. So one, two. So if I disable this, this is one, this is two. The one on top is larger and set to soft light. The one at the bottom is just normal. And I added a hue saturation. And let me enable that. Uh, yep, there. as you can see, I've increased the saturation and changed the hue. And I locked it up to the layer below it, obviously. And on top, I added just an overlay um, layer and I stroked it with yellow it's just to add that oomph to the photo yeah it's not necessary I just wanted to experiment with that and it looks great so let's have a look at the before after before after the sun flare I think it looks great and you can always control it from the main group folder just the intensity of it, that effect all right let's have a look one more time so this is the before and this is the after. Well, I think this is it, YouTube. Now, if you have any question, please leave me a comment, the comment section below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this amazing channel. Give it a thumbs up and follow me on Instagram and I'll see you in the next video.